I wanted to test a few different PCB copper heat sinking options for surface mount parts like voltage regulators, and PCBWay sponsored this project by providing the test PCBs. In this experiment, I have an LDO regulator that I want to use to take a certain input voltage of at least 5 volts and drop it down to a fixed 3.3 and then be able to safely operate with a load current getting near 400 milliamps because I'm using an 8 ohm load resistor between output and ground where the actual resistance seen by the voltage regulator is 8.5 ohms, including the alligator clips to hook it up. So the nominal current should be 388 milliamps. And the alligator clips I'm using have the wires soldered to the clip instead of being cheaply crimped. So those should stay good. I'm using the AMS 1117 3.3 volt output and the SOT 223 surface mount package. So the output tab, which is going to be soldered to the board with a copper area that helps act as a heat sink, is connected to the V out of the regulator. And we need heat sinking copper because as we draw load current and as we even increase the input voltage and keep a fixed output, these actions are going to cause the regulator to dissipate power based on the equation power dissipated by the device is input voltage minus output voltage times output load current. To keep the whole heat sinking topic basic, when components need to dissipate power, they heat up and we need to get that heat from the junction down in the die through the package to the heat sink and then out into the ambient air. And there's thermal resistances involved in each transition, so there's some resistance getting heat from the die out to the package of the chip, more resistance trying to get heat from the package to the heat sink, and more resistance between the heat sink and getting out to the ambient air. So all of that can be simplified as thermal resistance from junction to ambient air. And the lower that thermal resistance is, the better because it's easier to get heat out and away from the part. The regulator I'm using says we can't exceed 125 degrees Celsius at the junction. So based on our ambient air temperature, in my case I'm in a room that's around 22 degrees Celsius, but we would want to account for higher temperatures in a real design. And knowing the input and output voltages we're using and the load current we're trying to draw, the data sheet for the part should be able to tell us our thermal resistance of this actual part. And with all of that information, we can decide if we need a heat sink at all, and in this case, how much copper would we want on a PCB. And in this case, rather than trying to calculate how much top and or bottom side PCB copper we need, this LDO datasheet has some test data here showing different amounts of top and bottom copper and what the junction to ambient thermal resistance of this regulator can be with different amounts of copper. And this test was done with one ounce copper and standard PCB, same as I had made. And again, the lower the thermal resistance, the better because it means we can get heat out of the part better. So if we have a lot of copper both on the top and the bottom side of the board acting as a heat sink, we have a certain thermal resistance. But if we keep the same amount of copper on the bottom and we reduce the copper on the top a lot, we can still have the same thermal performance. So depending what we are doing, how much power we need to dissipate, we may be able to get away with not having as much copper on the top as we thought. Then they jump way down to 225 square millimeters, again the same amount of copper on the bottom, and then the thermal resistance starts increasing, meaning it's harder to get heat out of the device, so we would be able to dissipate less power. So I wanted to just experiment with this and actually see somewhere in between 225 and 1000 square millimeters of top copper with about this much bottom copper, can I still get this kind of performance and reduce the amount of top copper I need even further 
because most of the time I'm making physically small PCBs and there's not much copper available even on the bottom side. But just for the sake of establishing some sort of observation, on this test PCB I set up four copper areas where on the bottom side they are all 2300 or so square millimeters to be close to this. And then since we know from here we can get away with a thousand square millimeters and still have good performance, I created a top side copper area slightly larger than this. Then to get something in between here to fill in this chart, I chose another area of 650 square millimeters to see how it compares between these two data points. And then for really tight space PCBs, I made another test area again with all of this bottom copper, but only 150 square millimeters, just barely enough to attach the part to. And I wanted to see how that looked, because when we start getting down into that area, again the thermal resistance is getting worse and we can only dissipate so much power. The fourth area, again, the same large bottom side copper, and this time the same 150 square millimeters on top, but I used an array of vias connecting top and bottom to see how providing an easier path for heat to get through the board may impact things. They noted here that the top and bottom copper don't need to be electrically connected to be an effective heat sink. The PCB itself can effectively transmit heat between the top and bottom layers. So I wanted to add that test in when we kind of need some more thermal assistance. And since PCBs generally tend to have the bottom copper pore connected to ground, since this tab is not connected to ground, it's at V out, the fact that we don't need to add vias to get good heat transfer to the bottom, we can just use a ground plane sitting under this part while the top copper is connected to V out, and hopefully that does a good job. With the 8 ohm load connected to the LDO on the 1000 millimeter top copper pad, I put a thermocouple on the top of the LDO just to have an idea how hot it's getting, and another thermocouple on the bottom side directly under the LDO to observe temperature change as the bottom copper heats up. I have a meter showing the input voltage, which is starting at 5 volts, the output voltage, which should stay at 3.3, and then the output load current, which should be around 380 milliamps. So with that set up, we're dissipating around 0.66 watts. And now to test the heatsink, I increased the input voltage until the output voltage started dropping, indicating the LDO was having trouble functioning and began protecting itself. This occurred at around 9.1 volts in, and calculating the power dissipation with 9.1 volts in, the LDO was able to operate up to around 2.2 watts of power dissipation with this heatsink setup. Repeating the test with 650 square millimeters of top copper, the results were similar with 9.2 volts in and around 2.2 watts of power dissipation. So it looks like having only 650 square millimeters is about as good as a thousand square millimeters or more on the top side when we have that same large bottom side copper area. But when not much copper is available on the top, testing this 150 millimeter square copper area, still using the same large bottom copper, I was able to increase the input voltage to 8 volts before the output started struggling. This was a power dissipation of around 1.8 watts. Then I wondered, what if I don't have much top copper, so I stick to 150 square millimeters, but I do have bottom copper that I don't need connected to ground, and I can actually dedicate it to being on the same electrical net as that top copper. Then I can add a bunch of vias to connect top to bottom. I added 15 vias, with the drill being 0.4 millimeters, and the spacing between vias 0.8 millimeters, and three rows of five. This time I was able to get 9.1 volts in, and a power dissipation of 2.2 watts, like those other larger top copper areas, even though I had 
a smaller top area this time. So joining the top and bottom with a bunch of vias can increase the effective amount of top side copper available to the LDO for heat sinking. The final observation is, at least when dealing with around 2 watts of power, it's good to have a lot of uninterrupted bottom side copper present beneath the LDO, whether electrically connected to the top copper or not, to act as a heatsink. So then, using all of the typical calculations to figure out the maximum power dissipation we can allow a part to have, given its thermal resistance and the power we need to dissipate in it, we can use information like this, even if we want to dig out specific calculations for top and bottom side PCB copper, and whether we're using vias between those layers or not, it's still good to have this overall perspective now, so that we can see the impact of having a lot or not very much bottom or top side copper available, and how we may be able to balance out what we do have to work with to get reasonably similar results.